Eagles in their home white will work to the north goal here in the first half. Brad Darty on the wing. The Jordan turns left of the lane. It won't go off the back of the iron. Tapped outside, and Jordan knocks uh, Delaney Rudd to the floor and picks up personal foul number one. So that's the first quick team foul for Carolina for the Tar Heels coming in the first 12 seconds of play as the Deacons get the ball uh, out of bounds. T.G. inbounds the ball to Danny Young, and Jordan will apply pressure in the backcourt. Paul Houseman, Dick Paparo, and Jim Birch are tonight's officials in this Atlantic Coast Conference game. Along the right wing to Delaney Rudd. Bounces inside to Kenny Green. Back to Rudd in the right corner. Back to Green. Doherty behind him. Kenny Smith in front. Back to Rudd. Back it goes to Green. Turn, shoot. Won't go. Rebounded on the left side by Jordan. He was all alone. Stood flat-footed to put down. Drops it to Doherty. Matt works into the right corner. Gives it to Kenny Smith. Comes to Perkins now. Top of the circle. Back to Doherty. Goes to Smith in the right corner. High lob. Brad Doherty. Layup good off the glass. Brad Darty, who didn't score a single point, didn't attempt a shot at Wake Forest or at Duke, rather, from the field last Saturday night, stakes Carolina to a 2-0 lead. You've got to believe Anthony Teach, you might have missed an assignment there, Woody, and left Brad open under the basket. I don't think that made Carl Tacey very happy. Delaney Rudd, layup off the glass is good. The score is tied quickly at 2-all. 18.55 to play in the first half. Kenny Smith on the left-hand dribble, picked up by Delaney Rudd as he crosses the timeline, gets it to Brad Darty at the left wing. Darty looking low, goes to Jordan out top of the circle. Darty breaking back door. Michael can't get in the ball. He comes back to get it along the right baseline. Brad Darty, foul line, go. 4 nothing, or 4-2, rather, in favor of Carolina. Danny Young in the backcourt. Jordan will take him at the timeline. The Delaney Rudd. Back to Young. Right of the lane. Drops it back to Klein. Kenny Smith reached in. Got it away to Young. Young jump shot. 20 feet. No good. Bounded long. Recovered Klein. He and Tichi were both there. Klein takes it to the left sideline. Gives it to Tichi. Now drops it back to Young. Young wants to run the number two offense. Carolina is in a man-to-man -man defense. Darty has Young. Brad Darty has got uh, Kenny Green. Matt Darty on Anthony Tichi. Now goes to Delaney Rudd. Kenny Smith on him. Perkins deflects the pass. Rolls a backdoor pass intended for Young. Off to Smith. Three on two break. Block. Danny Young. Nice block. Recovered Brad Darty. Blocked away by Tichi. Two successive blocks by the Deacons. Danny Young coming quickly front court. Trying to tie. Here's Young. 15 feet. Went in. Pops out. Sam Perkins on the rebound. He shuffles it away to Smith. Now to Jordan. High lob into Brad Darty. Off the glass on the left. No good. Tapped in by either Jordan or Perkins. They give it to Jordan. It'll be Jordan's first field goal, and it's 6-2 in favor of Carolina. Young across the timeline, working to the right. Gives it up to Rudd. Rudd bounces low post to Green. Gets it right back in the right corner. Now Darty comes around to front Green. Rudd looking for the return pass to Tichy. Now to Young, left sideline. Low to Green, who works the baseline now on the left side. Back to Young. Jumper from the left corner is good by Danny Young. He's got his first field goal of the game, 6-4. Let's see if after Carolina gets the offense set, if they do something about Brad Darty underneath. Short off the left baseline. With an eight-foot jumper. Eight to four. Carolina again by four. 16.50 left to play in the first half. Young across the timeline. The students are up in the west end. Now bounces low to Kenny Green. Back to Young. Young in the lane. Tried to give it to Klein. Throw it away. Out of bounds. Second turnover for the Deacons. Carolina will take over. What you, the point I was about to make is that uh, down low when Carolina has... Uh, Got the ball. There's been some confusion as to what's going on on the low, uh, the baseline because Brad Darty's been open now for three shots. He's hit two of them, but uh, Anthony Tichy missing that assignment down there. It looks like to me. Kenny Smith from Steve Hale. Hale and Joe Wolf have come in the ball game during that last uh, dead ball situation. Hale against Young. Bounces low to Perkins. Over the top of Green. It won't go. Green's got the rebound in front of Perkins. Coming on the run. Gives it to Klein. He chases it down inside the hash park on the left. Now back to Young. Jump shot. And it's no good. Rebounded by Joe Wolf. Wolf drops it off to Kenny Smith. Smith across the timeline now on the right side. Smith with a 20-foot jumper. Good! It's 10 to 4 in favor of the Tar Heel. Just under 16 minutes to play in the half. Carl Tacey looking at the scoreboard clock, wondering when he'll get that official, first official timeout. It's going to come, I believe, on the next dead ball situation. Caught in the double team is Young. Gets it away to Tichy. Now to Klein, jumper, left corner. No good. Young over the... Oh, they call Hale for backing into Delaney Rudd. It looked like Rudd went over the top of uh, Hale's back trying to get the rebound. Now the teams are going to get to 
sit down, catch their breath, and talk about the first four minutes and 20 seconds of play of that facility. <laughs> 20 right now, Carolina 5 of 10, 50% from the field. Wake Forest is 2 of 7, 29%. Carolina has caused two turnovers so far for Wake. 10 to 4, 15 and a half minutes left to play in the first half. John Toms has come into the Wake Forest lineup now, replacing Klein. Also in the lineup is Tony Karasik, replacing Tichi. Toms handles in the right corner to Rudd, now to Young. Young going to Karasik in the right corner. Left corner, back to Young, now to Rudd. Jump shot, top of the circle, no good. Perkins has got the rebound. And we got a whistle and the fouls on Tony Karasik, the 6'9 sophomore from East Moline, Illinois. His first, it'll be the first team foul against the Deacons. Remember, Karasik did not play against Carolina. He received a little injury in the game before the Carolina game uh, two weeks ago, Woody, but he played against NC State on Saturday. And he gives the Carl Tacey's team a little rebounding strength off of the, uh, the bench that they do not have otherwise. So he could play an important part of this game that was not there when Carolina played Wake two weeks ago. Carolina now has Smith, Perkins, Jordan, Darty, and Hale in the lineup at the moment. Sam Perkins handles for Brad Darty, top of the circle. Now to Smith on the left side. I lob to Perkins. Caught it right baseline. Came down, feeds Hale. Jump shot, 17 feet. Off the front of the rim, no good. Chasing it down for the Deacons is Young. 10-4. Carolina in front. Danny Young coming to the south goal now for the gold-shirted Deacons of Carl Tacey to Rudd. Now it comes to Karasik. Goes in the corner to Toms. Toms drives baseline, puts up the jump shot. It was an air ball. Didn't strike iron. Rebounded Perkins. Brad Darty was there to sort of bother the shot by Toms. Here's Hale at the right baseline. Tried to get it back out front and threw it right between Brad Darty and Sam Perkins. The turnover, Carolina's first of the game, will give the ball to Wake Forest. Deacons playing the ball uh, inbounds in the backcourt. It'll be Danny Young who handles against Steve Hale's pressure defense. 14-30, left to play in the first half. Young goes inside the hash mark on the left. Loops it now to Karasik, top of the circle. Karasik gives it now to Toms. Toms working down the right, bounce to Kenny Green. Jordan picked his pocket. Third turnover for Wake Forest. Kenny Smith going to the north end of the auditorium for Carolina. High lob to Brad Darty, pushes it to Steve Hale. Gets it right back and lays it up good. What a great pass by Hale. Darty hit him, and Hale saw him suddenly break open and just rifle the return pass to him for the easy layup of a 12-4 spread. That's the biggest lead for Carolina, and so far they've done nothing to try to contain Carolina with a little bit of a height advantage down there, Woody. They're going to have to keep the ball out of the middle, and so far Wake Forest has not been able to do that tonight. Carolina continues to play the man-to-man -man defense. Young needs help, gets it finally to Toms. Jordan Hale there on the double team. Back to Young at the hash mark along the left sideline. Comes down to Tom's top of the circle. Jordan all over him defensively to Rudd. Smith's got him. He goes to the baseline. Perkins is there to cut him off. Uh, Smith got knocked back. Carolina wanted a foul. None coming. Here's Green on the jump shot. Partially deflected Brad Darty. Recovered Karasik. Hooks off the glass. No good. Green had a hand on it. They battle for it. Play volleyball with it. Knocked it out of bounds over the end line. It'll belong to Wake. With that, Carl Tacey will get Anthony Tichy up off the bench, and he's also going to put Muggsy into the ball game. <laughs> That's Tyrone Bogues, the 5'3 freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. Played on that highly successful program at Dunbar High School for Bob Wade. Remember in the uh, game a week and a half ago, Tyrone Bogues gave Kenny Smith fits, and uh, what he actually ch changed the complexion of the ball game the two times that he came in, so he's been a good little secret weapon off the bench for Carl Tacey, Tyrone Bogues. Dave Popson out of Ashley, Pennsylvania, missed the last two games, Henry, with a bruised lower back and hip has re-entered, uh, has entered the Carolina lineup for the first time, replacing Perkins. Wake Forest now with Klein, pass to Tiki, knocked away Smith, recovered Hale. Four turnovers for Wake Forest. Hale, top of the circle to Kenny Smith. He's left open, shooting over the Popson screen. It's no good. Tapped outside with a hand on it is Rudd. Here they come on the run. Rudd cannot get through, and he takes it to the left wing. Now he gives it to Bogues out front. Smith moves out on him. Bogues shouts out the offense for Wake Forest. We'll take it on the dribble to the left. Now bounces low to Tichy. Tichy up off the glass. No good. We got a whistle, and a blocking foul has been called on David Popson by Dick Paparo. Hopson picks up his first personal foul. That'll be only the second team foul against Carolina with just a shade under 13 minutes left to play in the first half. I know Dave Popson's glad to be back in the ballgame tonight. He missed two games because of that bruised right hip, Woody. And I talked to him before the ballgame tonight. He said uh, it's still a little bit sore, but he's glad to be back in action tonight. Bogues, Rudd, Klein, Tichy, and Green for Wake Forest. Hale, Smith, Darty, Jordan, and Popson for Carolina. The heels are in the 1-3-1 point zone. Wake Forest assessing this defensive change by Carolina now. And Carl Tacey wants a timeout. 
So Wake Forest will use a timeout. Coach Casey frustrated that when Carolina made the defensive change, Wake Forest continued to play the ball around the perimeter and was doing nothing with it. He wants to talk to them, and talk he will. 12.36 to play in the first half. Timeout on the floor. The score, Carolina 12, Wake Forest. Back Sutherland, Insurance and Realty, 693-9084, your Kemper representative. Beulah Smith, who's the mother of our network manager, Diane Smith. Beulah had a birthday last Thursday. Wake Forest inbounds the ball, so we want to send her belated congratulations on her birthday. We're passing out a few greetings uh, here tonight. Wake Forest back to the offense now. Carolina has gone, uh, well, now to a man-to-man -man defense. Teachy handles it against Popson. Moves inside, lobs it to Green. We get a whistle foul on Kenny Green, pushing off to get free underneath. He got wide open. I wonder, well, how can he get that open against that defense? And Paul Hausman's whistle told me he pushed off. Well, they were having quite a battle before that. Matter of fact, Kenny Green and Brad Darty have had a, a pretty good battle going all night down low, Woody. And uh, it just so happened, I think, that uh, Dick Paparato probably caught the last, uh, Paparo rather, caught the last guy to push, and that guy was uh, Kenny Green. Five turnovers now by the Deacons, one by the Tar Heels, Kenny Smith. Look away to Brad Darty in the front court. 12-4, the heels by eight with just over 12 minutes to play in the half. Henry will talk with Georgia Tech's Bobby Crimmins at halftime. The Yellow Jackets come into Chapel Hill Saturday. You want to stay tuned. Whistle foul. Another one on Green. It's his second straight. He picked up two quick ones. You'll remember he became the first Wake Forest player to foul out of a game this season on Saturday when he left the North Carolina State game, I think, with, uh, what, Henry, better than five minutes to play, and it was the start of the Deacons' demise. Well, that's right, and uh, Carl Tacey told us before the ball game that would be a problem. Brad, Brad Darty. Darty scores again for Carolina. It's his eighth point. He's got eight of the 14 points. 11.50 left to play in the first half. Rudd intercepted by Darty. Tried to get it to Bogue. Six turnovers now for the Deacons. Darty to Michael Jordan. Jump shot from the left. Good! It's 16-4. to The Tar Heels are cooking on the front burner here in the first nine minutes of play. Bogue across the timeline. The Carmichael Auditorium crowd, as you might expect, eating it up. Rudd, right wing to Bogues against the 1-3-1 zone. Decline. Bounces baseline to Tichy, back to Klein. He'll go up the sideline on the left. Bogues, Rudd, now to Green, who plays with two personal fouls. Bogues from Rudd to the foul line. Now back to Rudd. Travel called on Bogues. Turnover number seven. Carl Casey crouched in front of the Deacon bench, looking on in disbelief as he puts Raleigh's Danny Young and Lee Garber, the junior from Kingsport, Tennessee, into the lineup for Bogues and Klein. Well, it's got to be frustrating when you don't even get the shot off, Woody, but Wake Forest uh, has an atrocious shooting in this ballgame so far. They're 2 of 11 for 18%, and the ballgame is 9 minutes old. 16-4, 11-10 to go. Kenny Smith against the Wake Forest zone now. 2-3 Deacon zone. Matt Doherty bounces high post to Perkins. He wheels, feeds it over on the right side to Smith. Now to Jordan. He'll come off the baseline. Jump shot. No good. Tap ball of Brad Doherty. And it's knocked out of bounds. Paparo needs help. Jim Burke says it's Carolina's ball. Oh, I think they missed it, Woody. I think that ball went off of uh, Teachy's hand. Dick Kepley comes into the ball. Well, I knew I'd say that. Dick Kepley was his dad. It's Chuck <laughs> Kepley out of Roanoke, Virginia. Dick played at Carolina during the days I was around Chapel Hill. Kenny Smith over to Matt Darty. Darty moving a couple of dribbles up the right sideline. Now to Kenny Smith, top of the circle. Kenny trying to penetrate, feeds Darty on the right. Knocked away, Darty recovered. Whistle, travel called on Matt Darty. He came down, took a step with it. 16-4, it's a 12-point Carolina lead. That's only the second turnover. The disparity in turnovers right now telling a lot about the uh, difference between these uh, two teams. Danny Young across the timeline, gets it to Garber, whips it over to Kepley on the left wing, comes into the middle, feeds Garber. Garber shots up, and it's no good. Tap ball no good. Jordan's got the rebound. Long lead pass to Doherty. Caught it all a wide receiver going down the right sideline. Caught the double team. Jordan, 20 feet. Wouldn't go. Brad Doherty, rebound. Feeds Jordan. Jordan drives up off the glass. Good. Michael Jordan with eight. 18 to four. 10 5 left to play in the first half. Jump shot by Kepley is good. There's a whistle stopping play underneath. There's a pushing foul against Carolina. Kepley's basket will count. It's his first of the ball game. He did not play at all in the first meeting between these two teams. And the foul for Carolina is on Matt Doherty. It's his first. And the third team foul against the Heels here with 10 minutes left to play in the first half. That 18-foot jumper by Kepley is the first basket by Wake Forest in seven minutes and 29 seconds, Woody. They only scored four points 
in the first uh, nine minutes and 59 seconds of the ball game. So their shooting has got to improve greatly here for them to have a chance to beat the Tar Heels tonight. Danny Young will pull the trigger on the inbound play at the baseline. Kenny Green out front. It goes to Kepley. Smith almost knocked it away. Kepley back to Green. Jump shot. Baseline good. Kenny Green's first bucket of the ball game. It took him 10 minutes to get it. Back on January the 14th, he had uh, 15 points in the first half, 19 for the game. Smith, low to Perkins, turns off the glass, too hard. Rebound, Tichy, lost it to Garber, now it's to Young. Young coming front court for Wake Forest on the left. 18-8 score, Kepley shooting over Hale, no good, bounce high. Darty doing a good job of boxing out Garber, coming down with a rebound. Off to Smith, quickly down the right sideline to the corner. To Wolf, Joe Wolf is back to the lineup. Darty, Hale, jump shot, no good. Rebound, pulled down by Tichy. He had good inside position that time on Joe Wolf. To Danny Young. Young down the left sideline to Garber. Garber holds high, puts it to the floor, whips it to Tichy. He's open, 20 feet, will take the jump shot, and it's good. Anthony Tichy's first field goal. Pulls Wake Forest within eight. 18 to 10. Wake Forest has run off six unanswered points to cut this 12-point lead down to only eight. Here's Perkins from Kenny Smith. Back it goes to Smith. Jump shot. Good, Kenny Smith. That's his second field goal. Well, it had been a 14-point uh, lead and then down to eight with six straight points. 20 to 10 the score now with 8.35 left to play in the first half. Danny Young. Anthony Tichy against Perkins. Spins off Perkins. Knocked away Smith. He'll get the dunk. You can count on it. There it is. Baby dog. One-handed jam job. <laughs> 22 to 10. Jimmy Black could dunk from the point, but he never did it with the regularity that Kenny Smith does. Green and the double team feeds Young. Layup blocked away Perkins. Goals ending. Young will get the bucket for Wake Forest. It's his second. 22 to 11. 8.04 to play in the half. Well, Wake's uh, scoring has picked up a little bit. Carolina picks up the momentum again, but in a period where Carolina went one for five before those last two Kenny Smith baskets, Wake Forest was three of four. So just as I'm talking about their uh, they're shooting tonight, Woody. They picked up the pace a little bit, but once again, Carolina's grabbed the momentum again. Cecil Lexham comes into the Carolina lineup along with Popson, so the heels have Hale, Jordan, Popson, Darty, and uh, Exum. 22 to 12, the score. I may have said 11 a moment ago. The scoreboard uh, a little slow going to that last digit. Inbounds to Hale. Comes front court to Exum, down in the left corner. Cecil out front to Brad Darty, top of the circle to Popson. Popson feeds Jordan. Jordan up off the glass. No good. Tap follow, no good. Green with a rebound. Outlet goes to Young on the right. By a standing Carl Tacey at the Wake Forest bench. Young comes right of the circle. Kepley fakes Jordan. Jump shot. Good by Chuck Kepley from Rono. His second field goal, 22-14. Hale, reverse dribble, gets him by Young. Cecil Exum, he's wide open, right corner, knocks the bottom out of him. Nobody was playing Cecil tight. He drilled it from about 18 feet down the right sideline. 24-14. Danny Young across the timeline. The Deacons have never led the ball game. I think it uh, may have been tied early at two all. But then it was Carolina running off four to get up six to two, and the Heels have been looking back since. Garber bounces low to Tichy. Jump shot off the baseline. It was green, rebounded by... George Tariels have got great board coverage here in the first half. Almost every missed shot, there's a heel underneath. Brad Darty, 13 feet, missed that one. Exum taps it to Popson. Whistle fouls on Cecil Exum going over a Wake Forest back in the middle. Foul on Exum becomes his first, and it's the fourth team foul. And right now, an official timeout being called at Carmichael Auditorium in Chapel Hill. 6.54 left to play in the first half with the score. Walter, they're flooding our kitchen for the steeplechase. Parachute World, just off I-26, next to World of Clothing in Hendersonville. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of description and account of this game without the express written consent of the Tar Heel Sports Network and WCHL is prohibited. Woody's shooting is evening up just a little bit. Carolina 11 for 25, 44. Wake Forest 7 for 20, 35. They went to 2 of 13, and then they hit 5 of the next 6 before they missed their last shot. So Wake's uh, shooting has picked up quite a bit here in the last couple of minutes. Well, the Tar Heels at one stretch run off 12 unanswered points to build up a 14-point lead. The Deacons countered with six. It's back to 10 now at 24-14. Kepley kicks away the bounce pass from Young. 
recovered Matt Darty. That's nine turnovers now for Wake Forest to Kenny Smith down on the left of the circle. Matt Darty open, driving down into the right corner on his dribble. He'll fire from there. Good. Matt Darty. 26 to 14. Darty with his first bucket of the night. Six and a half minutes left to play in the first stanza from Carmichael. Danny Young calls the Deacon offense, picked up by Jordan as he crosses the timeline, goes to Garber, looks low for Green, gets it to him, turns over Brad Darty, scores, and it's good. Fouls on Brad Darty, says Dick Paparo. Foul on Brad is his first. It is the fifth team foul, and Green picks up his second field goal. He'll get a chance to go to the line for the three-point play. We all send along our very best to Buzz Peterson, the Asheville, North Carolina junior tonight. Buzz not with the Tar Heels this evening. He had to return to his native Asheville due to the illness of an ant. He hopes to be back this weekend when Carolina plays Georgia Tech on Saturday and 10th ranked LSU on Sunday. Both those are 1 o'clock. Our broadcast times will be 12.35 both days. Green misses the free throw, rebounded by Perkins. 26-16, 6.20 left to play in the half. Kenny Smith across the timeline against Delaney Rudd. Calling the offense as he moves left. Now back to the right. Bounces to Darty. Breaks free at the right wing. High lob underneath to Perkins. Perkins whips it back to Darty. He's open. 15 feet. Jump shot's a little strong. Brad darty has got the rebound. Holding it up as he's really worked on that. Gets the outlet to Kenny Smith. Smith, top of the circle. Whips it now to Darty on the right. Goes low again to Perkins. Perkins fakes. Now will come with a jump hook. It's too strong. Darty there. Lost it. Perkins recovers it. Gently lays it in for field goal number one. Carolina 8 16. Excuse me, Woody. Carolina is doing a good job on the offensive board tonight, and uh, they're a little taller than Wake Forest is, but much better job than they did against Wake a week and a half ago on the offensive board. It's been a big difference in this ballgame. Delaney Rudd from out on the right, off the front of the rim, no good. Jordan in front of Perkins, down with a rebound. Perkins, Bob Woodruff tells us, has six rebounds. He's moved solidly into second place on Carolina's all time career rebounding list. That's Brad Darty on the turnaround jumper off the left baseline. Darty with 10. I believe Brad has been told to shoot the ball. Ball kicked away. Young and Jordan. Michael will let it go out of bounds at the baseline, and it belongs to Wake Forest, says Paul Houseman. You know, I get the impression, as Dean Smith will send Joe Wolf into the ball game, I get the impression, uh, Henry, Coach Smith did not talk about it or indicate anything any different, but I mentioned earlier in our broadcast tonight that uh, Brad Darty did not even attempt a field goal at Duke on Saturday night. Every time he's getting it at the low post, he's turning and looking for the goal now. Well, I you, think he's been told to put it up. Well, you remember uh, he's kind of hot and cold all year long. Remember the Madison Square Garden tournament, Woody, when he scored no points one night and I think 17 the next. Here's Bogues to Garber. Comes cross court on the right to Rudd. Rudd will drive in the middle. Takes the 12-foot jump shot. No good. Bounces over Joe Wolf to Anthony Ticci. Fakes Perkins up for the shot. Basket is good and Perkins call for the foul. I think Dean Smith wanted Sam that time to go straight up and establish that uh, principle of verticality that the officials have been asked to re-emphasize. Instead, as he wheeled, he put his hip into Tichy for the six-team foul, Perkins first. Tichy has his second field goal. He'll have a chance for the Deacons' second three-point play of the night. Green failed to convert a moment ago. 30-18 to 18 the score. Make it 30-19. to 19. 4.51 left to play in the half. Wolf inbounds to Perkins. Now comes to Smith. Wake Forest will pick up at the midline. Bogues is back in the game, and he's got Smith. They run with it right to the uh, left of the circle. Inside pass to Wolf, intercepted by Tichy. Carolina with only three turnovers. Here's Bogues giving up to Rudd. Rudd drives baseline off. It's a foul to Laney Rudd. What a great job of getting there and establishing defensive position at the baseline by Steve Hale. Steve's having a little trouble getting his shot to go down tonight and coming off that... Uh, career high of 13 at Duke on Saturday night and Rudd's been injured in that collision with Hale. Bob Woodruff showing us that Steve Hale is 0 for 2 from the floor but that takes nothing away from his defense. What he, when Delaney Rudd was driving the baseline Steve Hale got his feet down in time to draw the charge but what happened I think he turned his ankle just as contact was made between Rudd and Hale and uh, right now the trainers for uh, Wake Forest out having a look at Delaney Rudd. Good defensive play by Steve Hale. We've seen him do that so many times this year but it points out again at how quick Steve Hale is at getting there and planting that foot and making that great defensive play on the block charge. Henry, he was standing on his feet, so it's not the ankle, it's his knee. That's the knee they're tending to, and it was one on which he was already wearing one of the black knee braces. Uh, so he is down. The Deacon uh, medical staff is uh, attending to, to him at the moment. Carolina's shooting right now. Carolina 14 for 30, 47 percent in the ballgame. Wake is 9 for 24. Or, uh, yes, right, 9 for 24, 38 percent. One for two from the line for the Deacons. 
Carolina with three turnovers, Wake Forest with ten, and uh, Wake Forest uh, with a lot of, I think if I recall correctly, Woody, there was a lot of turnovers in that ball game uh, in Greensboro two weeks ago in the, uh, in the first half. So Carolina defensively giving Wake Forest a little trouble. Rudd is obviously in a lot of pain. He's been helped to his feet. He gets a nice round of applause. You'll recall Delaney Rudd with 16 points in the first game between these two teams. Thus far tonight, he has one field goal in four attempts. Hit his first shot, missed his last three. The applause continues as Rudd is going to be helped to the Wake Forest dressing room. I'm going to note that on the scoring chart, 437, Rudd left with Carolina leading 30 to 19. Now, we'll see what effect that has on Wake Forest. Sometimes it can cause you to band together a little tighter. You'll play a little better, but I don't uh, see how that's possible in most situations to lose a player of the caliber of Rudd. Bogues is in the lineup now. He and Kepley at the backcourt position. Smith tried to go to Perkins, threw it away over the inline out of bounds. It'll be Wake Forest ball on Carolina's fourth turnover. We were talking about rebounds. Carolina six offensive rebounds to Wake Forest three. Carolina holds a 14 to eight edge in the rebound department for the entire game. What is so Carolina's uh, down low strength playing on the Deacons a little bit. Klein jump shot from 25 feet, no good. Rebounded Kepley at the right baseline. He'll put up a follow jump shot, no good. Perkins tapped it off the glass, recovered Green. He can't score. Perkins had it again, lost it. Smith has it on the right baseline. Lead pass to Hale going down the left sideline. Steve gets it right back to Kenny Smith. Over to Matt Darty on the right, comes to Perkins, top of the circle. Fakes an inside pass, goes to Hale. Look low for Darty. Whoops it instead to Wolf, top of the circle. Now to Smith on the right wing. Comes to Matt Darty. Darty looking inside the Deacon man to man. Goes to Wolf. Now to Steve Hale, top of the circle. Look to Kenny Smith, who has Bogues on him. Hale backing up top of the circle on his dribble to Wolf. Now comes to Darty. Darty looks low for Smith. Smith puts up the shot. No good. Wolf is there for the follow. Scores and he's fouled by Chuck Kepley. Joe Wolf gets his first bucket. The foul on Kepley's his first. And it will be the fifth team foul called against Wake Forest. 32-19 the score. Henry, you know what it did 18 years ago today? 18 years ago today. No, I know it's 31 years ago today. Well, we talked about that earlier. Yeah. 18 <laughs> years ago today, it snowed a blizzard because my son was born 18 years ago today. Well, oh, happy birthday, 18 West. years old today. Well, good. Joe Wolf up with a free throw, and that's good. Wolf now with three points. And there's been a timeout taken here at Carmichael Auditorium. I promise you, no more birthday greetings. <laughs> 3.32. Available at Shoney's in Hendersonville, Asheville, Waynesville, Inca, and Brevard. Woody Durham with Henry Hinton and our entire Tar Heel Sports Network crew. Jerry Brown, our engineer. Bob Woodruff, our statistician. John Dahl, production assistant. And, of course, Jim Hefner, our executive producer. Happy to be sending this story your way tonight. Wake Forest has been uh, shooting on interesting streaks tonight. They were 2 of 13. Then they had 6 out of the next 8. And then one of their last 6, Woody. Kepley on the jumper. Got a nice feed from Bo to split the Wake Forest defense. Kepley now with 6. 33 to 21. Kenny Smith quickly the other way as the Tar Heels work to the north goal. Pass for Brad Darty, batted away by Anthony Tichy, controlled on the high bounce by Tichy. Off to Bogues, Bogues, nice bounce pass to Klein, reverse layup is good. 33 to 23, the Deacons building a little head of steam here in the late stages of the half. We get a whistle, ball knocked out of bounds, it's off Darty and it will be Wake Forest ball. Carolina's sixth turnover, and the Deacons have got a chance now to chop the lead down to eight. It had gone back to 14 at 33-19. Deacons have run off four unanswered points. Can make it six right here against the Tar Heel matchup zone. Tichy to Kepley in the right corner. Back out front it goes to Bogues. Bogues working just outside the center jump circle. Now comes to midcourt to Klein, to Green. Back it goes to Klein. Now back to Bogues. Bogues off to Klein. Klein with Darty on him in the zone. Getting it now to Bogues. Bogues across the top of the circle to Kepley at the right wing. Back out front now to Bogues. He's changing the Deacon offense. Wants number one this time around to Kepley. Back to Bogues. Bogues top of the circle to Klein. Klein deep in the corner. Gets it back to Bogues. Now back to Klein. The clock was down to five seconds. The shooting clock rebounded Darty. Off to Smith. Now to Brad, to Matt Darty. Darty controlled his dribble with Klein sticking a hand in. Here is uh, Kenny Smith. Beats to Perkins. Perkins up off the glass. Scores. Sam Perkins with his second field goal. 35-23. Two minutes left to play. Bobby Crimmins talks with Henry Hinton at halftime. Stick around for that. Mark Klein to Kenny Green. 
left corner. Boy, the Carolina defense has done a job on Green here in the first half, who's playing with two personal fouls. Bogues, foul line, tried to drop it to Green, threw it behind him, Kepley recovered to Bogues, and Kenny Smith bumps it. Bogues caught the ball, and the top of his head comes only up to the letters on Kenny Smith's jersey, and he just sort of stopped, and Kenny couldn't stop. He went right over the top of it. Well, funny sight when he was posting up with uh, Kenny Smith down at the other end of the court just a moment ago, Woody, at 5 3. Uh, Tyrone Bogues, the freshman, is uh, is really kind of an interesting player to watch down there. But I tell you what, he's penetrated now inside three times, and uh, a net result of that so far, four points. And you got to think that that little penetration move he made just a moment ago may have had something to do with a foul uh, indirectly and an opportunity for more points. But he that's missed the first, free throw. That's the first free throw he's missed in five attempts this season. Perkins with a rebound to Smith. Smith gets it right back to Jordan. Jordan, left baseline, soft jumper, good. Ball got up there, rolled all around, and fell through for Michael's 10th point. 37-23, and the ball is turned over by Wake Forest on the inline. I believe Wake Forest stepped across the inline on making the inbounds play to turn it over. Yes, that's exactly what happened. It was Tichy trying to give it to Bogues. Inbounded. Darty shots up, no good. Tap ball of Perkins. He can't control it. Knocked into the right corner. Picked up by Brad Darty. Goes low to Perkins. Jump hook. Lane counted. 39-23. The Heels' biggest lead of the night. It's at 16. 115 left to play in the first half. 1-3-1 point zone for the Tar Heels. Kepley for Bogues along the right wing. Back to Bogues. Bogues top of the circle to Klein. Bounces it to Green at the baseline on the left. Back to Klein at the wing. Klein comes out front to Bogues. Bogues will come left of the circle now. Gets it to Green. Jump shot over the top of Jordan from 13 feet. No good. Matt Doherty and Tichy battle for the rebound. And it's going to be Wake Forest ball on the alternating possession. Boy, Kenny Green, I think, took a bad shot there, Woody. He may be getting a little bit frustrated. Carolina doing such a nice job on him down low that he really has not had an opportunity to uh, get at the basket too much tonight. And I really think he forced that one up. He may be feeling the uh, pressure a little bit right now. Wake Forest controlling the ball. It's Mark Klein. Bounces low to Green. Lost it. Tapped around. Finally controlled by Jordan at the foul line. Carolina coming away with the Deacon turnover. That's 11 for Wake Forest. 39-23. Dean Smith wants four corners, one shot. Perkins didn't see him. He started his move. Knocked out of his hand, says Dick Preparo. But Perkins touched it last. And it'll be Wake Forest ball at the baseline. 35 seconds to play right now. Danny Young stealing a look to the Wake Forest bench. Carl Tacey not even flashing anything, just sitting there and talking with his chief assistant, Ernie Nestor. Wasso turned over, double dribble by Klein. I'm sure Carl Casey's got to feel right now if this is just not the Deacons' night. Of course, they've got a full 20 minutes to play in the second half, chance for anything to happen, but I think he's anticipating getting to the dressing room and making the adjustments he needs to make. 39-23, 15 seconds remain. The Tar Heels are in the four corners. Now Tacey is calling his defense. Everybody moving out in a matchup situation. Here's Jordan driving down to the left. He'll use the glass, and it's good. Four, three, two, one. The Deacons get it in. There's the end of the half. Kepley fired from the backcourt, but it was way off its mark, and the Tar Heels go to the dressing room with an 18-point cushion. This but for you. to Carolina. And we'll be back with Dick DiVengio after this from Thank you, Dick DiVengio. Billy, it's an interesting rating system he's got there. I think we had the figures reversed. He mentioned that, that North Carolina getting much better shot selection in this game, and it reflects on the scoreboard. Into second place on Carolina's all-time career list. He is now looking at the leader, Billy Cunningham, who has 1,062. And if he stays healthy and continues to play good, somewhere... Around uh, mid-February or so forth, he will probably overtake the kangaroo kid. Well, knock on wood, Sam Perkins just a terrific play since, uh, I don't know, first two or three games of the, of the uh, season, Woody, since that North Carolina trip, uh, since the New York trip, though, the last week of December, Sam Perkins has just been on a tear. 41-23, we start the second and final 20 minutes of play. Carolina leading by 18 points, and the heels in white moving to the south goal. Here's Matt Doherty, jump shot, 13 feet, good. Darty now with four points, 43 to 23. Carolina up by 20. 
Delaney Rudd came back out and took some warm-ups at the start of the second half, but is not playing. Chuck Kepley has started at the Deacon backcourt. He injured his knee. Tom's at the right wing. Ball partially deflected. Caught by Young, but it hit the floor out of bounds before he could put a hand on it. So it'll still be Wake Forest ball. You know, with Carolina leading by 20, it looks like they're in control of this ballgame. What he remember, though, against Virginia one week ago tonight, they were up by 21 at this point in the game. Jordan knocks it away. Tom's recovered in the lane. Up for the shot, and it won't go. Tapped up, won't go. Perkins had a hand on it. They continue to tap it around. Finally, Doherty comes out of there with it. He gets it ahead to Perkins. Perkins down on the right wing. Pulls up there, wants to wait for something to get set up. Goes to Brad Darty. Brad holding high, back to Perkins. Sam will come up the right sideline, gets it out front to Kenny Smith. Smith through the center jump circle, now over to Brad Darty at the left wing. Peachy's on him. Brad holding the ball back behind his head, bounced it to Matt Darty. He lost. Oh, wait a minute. Paparo missed it badly. Paparo's being overruled by Paul Hausman. Says it was touched by Chuck Kepley, and he's exactly right. The Wake Forest assistant wanted a uh, jump ball call, but uh, Paul Houseman, I, I, I think Dick Preparo must have gotten screened out or something, or looked away when he saw it touched the first time because Chuck Kepley did indeed touch it, and Paul Houseman stepped in and made the call. Brad Darty, top of the circle against Teachy, bounces to Matt Darty. Gets Chuck Kepley. He'll come off the baseline now. Breaks his dribble. Gets it finally to Brad Darty. Turns baseline against Peachy. Here's Matt Darty. Tried to lay it up. Blocked and the foul's on Kenny Green. That's his third. Green has a look of disbelief on his face. It'll be his third. First team foul second half against uh, Wake Forest. Let's pause quickly. Ten seconds. Station identification. You're listening to the Tar Heels Sports Network. Kit Country, WKIT, Hendersonville. Kit 102, WKIT. Matt Darty, the ninth best free throw shooter in the ACC at just a shade under 77%. Knocks in the first one. The second one is good at 45 to 23. The Tar Heel lead continues to grow now. They have run off four points here in the first 90 seconds of the second half. The Deacons have yet to crack the scoring ice. Kepley will try to do it and does off the right baseline. Chuck Kepley with his eighth point, 45-25 with 18-20 to play. Brad Darty to Matt Darty in the run, coming down the left sideline inside the hash mark, starting to drive, and Chuck Kepley knocks it away out of bounds and will still belong to Carolina. 18-10 left to play in the ball game. Carolina leading 45 to 25. The Tar Heels going for win number 15 in a row. It would leave them 6 and 0 in the conference. And atop the heap with Maryland and Georgia Tech at 3 and 1. Darty to Perkins. Perkins right of the circle gives it back to Matt Darty. Matt drives the foul line, beats Kenny Smith, whistle, and we get a blocking foul called on Chuck Kepley. The Roanoke Virginia Jr. commits his second personal foul, and that's the second team foul against Wake Forest in the second half. John Tom starts the second half for Wake Forest, Woody, and Mark Klein started the ball game. Interesting uh, situation there. Tom's with a, a great year last year. Well, we'll pick the story up in just a moment. The ball's Carolina with possession. Darty over to Jordan. Jump shot, 20 feet. Good. Michael Jordan, who went 6 of 10 for 12 in the first half, now with 14. 47-25, Carolina. Young to Kepley. Kepley works underneath Smith, puts up the shot. It hit the back of the backboard and fell out of bounds that will belong to Carolina. You were saying, Henry. Well, I was talking about the Klein-Tom situation. Klein started tonight. I believe uh, he also started against Carolina two weeks ago, and he had a pretty good ball game, but he has not, uh, he's got to shoot that outside shot and make it to play uh, in this league, Woody, and tonight he just hasn't done it in the first half. Darty loses the handle on the ball. He and Tichy scrap for it, and it's Tichy who comes up with it right in front of the Tar Heel bench. First turnover of the half for Carolina. Toms drives baseline, stripped to the ball by Darty from behind. Well, Tom's had been the starter at the outset of the season, Henry. You'll remember, and then Lee Garber came in replacement because Tom's has had trouble shooting the ball. He's only at 43% coming in here tonight. But you're right, against Carolina, and a point well made. He has played well. Ball knocked away. Tichy recovered. Kenny Smith off to Matt Darty. To Michael Jordan for the dunk. He was actually fumbling the ball when he caught it, and as he got up to the basket, he recovered enough to dunk it. 49 to 25. Largest lead for the Tar Heels. Blocking 24. foul on Carolina. Blocking foul. Michael Jordan is second. First team foul. Of course, you know I talk about the great things Michael Jordan does, and he does do a lot of great things. But it don't 
Kurt, to do those great things when you have the talent that he does. <laughs> 49 to 25, and I believe he got his and somebody else's when it was being dished out because he brought a bunch with him. Young, top of the circle. 16.50 left to play at the ball game. Young works now to the right against Matt Darty. Looking for Kepley. Finally bounces it to Tichy. Tichy turns on Perkins. Now back to Young. Young, 25 feet. No good. Bounces away to the left. Recovery Kepley all alone. Shot blocked. Brad Darty. Matt Darty tried to get it to Jordan. Knocked away. Recovered. Perkins off to Jordan. He'll take it all the way. Scores and is fouled by Tichy. Holy cow. Started. Darty almost fell down. Young knocked it away. Perkins tapped it ahead to Jordan. Jordan going in on the left, protected it, scored, and was fouled. I thought the ball was going to be kicked away out of bounds somewhere at about the timeline. Well, you know, that action got underway on the block by Brad Darty on a beautiful block. He was actually screened out by Kenny Green, but he went up over Green, made the block, and got that play going. 19 points for Michael Jordan, 52 to 25. A 27-point lead. Tichy to Toms. Flips it away to Kenny Green off the left baseline. Good. But that's only Green's third field goal of the game for six points. 52-27, and he came in here tonight, the third leading scorer in the league at 17-5. Darty driving in the lane. Up, no good. Half ball of Brad Darty. Boy, Brad Darty is cleaning the glass on the board tonight. 54-27. Tar Heels have got the score doubled on the Deacons. Comes now to Kepley, bounces low to Green. Block, Perkins foul called on Sam. It's his second. It'll be the second team foul against Carolina in the second half. Steve Hale is into the Carolina lineup as Jordan comes out. So Carolina will have Kenny Smith out of Queens, New York. Steve Hale, Jinx, Oklahoma. Matt Darty, East Meta, New York. Brad Darty, Black Mountain, North Carolina. Sam Perkins from Latham, New York. Wake Forest has just not had any inside game at all to speak of tonight. Kenny Green makes his first free throw, and he did get fouled on that one. That was a, uh, a look like a clean block. Woody must have got him with the arm, but uh, Wake Forest just has not been able to do anything inside on Carolina. Just terrific defense down low. Kenny Green makes both his free throws. The teams will go to the bench. The Tar Heels are leading by the low. Coach Dean Smith had finished whatever he had to say to the team, and he was just letting them get their breath and an extra drink of water, and all of a sudden he looked around. The five Wake Forest starters were out there. He quickly jumped back in front of the team and told him to go back at it. Carolina's five for six in the second half, 83%. The Deacons, two for six, 33%. Carolina red hot, Woody. Brad Darty to Sam Perkins. Deacons will put on backcourt pressure. Don't, re don't forget, though, what Virginia did last Thursday night or Wednesday night. I'll tell you, that will always cause you never to fall asleep at the switch. Kenny Smith coming to the foul line. Hale had fallen down between the Wake Forest double team, got rid of the ball. Smith fires from out on the left. Kenny Smith with eight points. He's made four of seven from the field tonight. That's his first one of the second half. 56 to 29. Bogues gives it up to Young. Now it comes back to Bogues. Carolina's dropped back into the 1-3-1 point zone now. Toms, Bogues, Young. Young moving against Hale on the right. Back to Bogues. Bogues will try to penetrate. Goes all the way through. Nice dish pass to Tichy. Great pass by Bogues to Anthony Tichy. 56-31. Well, the little guy can penetrate Woody. He can hurt you when he gets down low. Smith to Hale on the drive. Up off the glass and good. Nice drive, Steve Hale. Took it the baseline. I think the Deacon defense thought Hale was going to pass it off, but he took it home for a 58-31 lead. Green to Young. Driving right baseline. Cut off there by Smith and Brad Darty. Bounced it to Tichy. Ball got kicked away, says Dick Paparo off Matt, Dar Matt Darty, and it'll still be Wake Forest ball. Joe Wolf out of Kohler, Wisconsin. Michael Jordan out of Wilmington. Replace Brad Darty and Matt Darty. The Deacons at the moment have got Danny Young from Raleigh, Tyrone Bogues from Maryland, Anthony Tichy from Goldsboro, Kenny Green from Eustis, Florida, and John Toms out of Shelby in the lineup. Toms jumper from on the left is missed. Jordan battles Hale for the rebound. Streets by Tom. Hits an open. Sam Perkins coming in on the right. Tried to lay it up, and he's fouled by Tichy. Foul on Anthony Tichy is his second. It will be the fourth team foul. And send Sam Perkins to the line to shoot a pair. You know, we were talking earlier tonight, Henry, about the fact that Sam has moved ahead of Mitch Kupchak and now trails only Billy Cunningham in Carolina's career rebounding. Sam starts the game tonight needing just 20 points to move ahead of Sweet D. Walter Davis on Carolina's all-time career scoring list in the sixth place. 
having a great year, just a super year, Woody. 58-31 the score. Perkins, six points, six rebounds thus far tonight. Free throw is good. He's got seven. He'll have another shot coming. Has a chance to join Phil Ford and Jack Cobb at the end of this season. Is Carolina's only three-time basketball All-Americans. The next one is good as well. Eight points now for Perkins, 60 to 31. Inbounds from Karasik to Bogues. Bogues with Hale chasing him. Kenny Smith coming over to help out. Bogues feeds Tichy off balance. Shots up no good. Jordan taps the rebound. Gets the outlet to Kenny Smith coming on the right. Smith will take it to the middle and Bogues reached in to foul him. Foul on Bogues becomes the first one and it'll be the fifth team foul. Carolina will get the ball out of bounds. 14-17 left to play. Our airtime Saturday for Georgia Tech Carolina will be 12.35 to the Tar Heel Sports Network station to which you're listening. Kenny Smith will inbound from the baseline. Gets it in. Joe Wolf. Danny Green leaped in front of him, took it away. Three on one break. Green filling the middle. Goes all the way against Steve Hill. Hale puts up the shot. No good, but the foul blocking is on Steve Hale. Hale picks up his first. It'll be the third team foul against Carolina. And I think bring on... Uh, Two shots here for Danny Young. Young took it all the way to the baseline. Fake tail, who didn't take the fake, went up for the shot. Jim Birch coming in from behind says Hale got him with the body. As Danny Young, out of Emlo High School in Raleigh, goes to the free throw line. You know, he had only seven points in the first meeting between these two teams, but in the last two, he scored 32 points in the victory over Duke and the loss to State. He misses the free throw here. Woody Kepler's come back in the ballgame for Tyrone Bogues and uh, have to see if the pace of the game changes like it did when Bogues came out in Greensboro a week and a half ago. You know, I, I thought it was interesting. Dean Smith's comment after the ball game that he would hate to have to guard somebody like Tyrone Bogues. I'd hate to have Bogues guarding me. He's so fast. Young missed both his free throws. Rebound by Carolina. Smith at the right wing where he picks up his dribble. Now goes to Perkins. Top of the circle. Over there on the left side. They swing it to Hale. Baseline to Wolf. Back to Hale. He penetrates. Feeds Kenny Smith. Perkins set a great screen, and Smith knocks it in. The screen that Sam set was actually about 10 feet from where Kenny Smith was, but when Sam sets the screen, he keeps everybody away. 62-31. Young penetrating. Feeds Karasik. Jump shot out of the right corner. No good. Jordan with a rebound. Outlet comes to Steve Hale. Catches it on the bounce coming down the right sideline in front of the Tario bench to Smith. Feeds inside Perkins. Up for the shot. Knocked away Tichy. One out of bounds off, I believe, either Garber or Karasik. But it'll be Carolina's ball. Matt Doherty's in for Kenny Smith. Kenny Green is going to come back for Wake Forest. Green is going to replace Tony Karasik for the Deacons. Wake Forest, of course, will be at home on Saturday against Virginia as the Cavaliers continue a grueling road trip. 13.25 left to play here in Chapel Hill tonight. Darty beats Jordan. Dumps it back to Darty. Darty in the left corner. Jordan got hanging in the air and actually just sort of tucked his knees up under his chest and fed the ball to Darty. That's the reason for the oohs and ahs in the background. Hale, high post to Wolf. Knocked away. Tapped back into the Carolina bench. It'll belong to Wake Forest. Three turnovers in the second half now for the Tar Heels. 62-31, Carolina with a 31-point lead. The score is exactly doubled on Wake Forest. Danny Young across the timeline against Tail. Works to the hash mark. Looking inside all the while as he moves. Here's Kenny Green. Knocked away, Hale, here's Jordan. Jordan out in front, Young will try to stop him. Jordan was gonna try to cuff dunk, and the crowd boos Danny Young's foul because for a moment there, it looked like showtime in Chapel Hill. Young's foul is his first. Six-team foul against Wake Forest in the second half. That was a good foul by Danny Young, though. He got to Jordan before he was able to get into shooting motion. Carolina will not be shooting. He'll be taking the ball out of bounds. Good, smart play by Danny Young if he had one to give. Hale inbounding to Darty. Darty right wing, loops it to Hale. Hale goes high post to Joe Wolf. Back to Matt Darty. Darty comes down to the foul line from the right to Perkins. Perkins in the lane. Jump hook, no good. Sam's got his rebound. Follows up, won't go. Tap volley is good. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. 64-31, 33-point Carolina lead. Garber bounces the ball now to Young. Young moving out into the midcourt areas where Steve Hale continues to stalk him. Now he moves down the right side, goes to the baseline. Bounce pass to Green. Fall away jumper baseline. Rebounded Perkins behind Garber. 
fake the pass, now gives it to Matt Doherty. He whips it quickly to Steve Hale. Hale down the right sideline in front of the Tar Heel bench. The heels in white, working to the south goal. Joe Wolf, jump shot over Chichi. Good, and he fouled. I really like the post-offensive moves of the young Carolina big people. Bo Popson, not playing any more than he has, comes into the game and looks very fluid on offense at the post, and particularly Joe Wolf, who's just drawn Anthony Tichy's third personal, the seventh team foul, and Wolf will go to the line with a free throw, Henry. Well, Joe Wolf said something there, Woody, that uh, Roy Williams, assistant basketball coach for Carolina, on your coaching tip on Dean Smith's TV show on Sunday, was talking about doing, and he did it so well. The ball went down low to the low post. He held the ball up high, turned and shot, never brought the ball down. Nobody had a chance to even uh, get their hands on it, and uh, that's the sign of a good play, especially for a freshman. Big people, as the coaches tell you, put it high because you can do anything with it from there. She points out a very interesting fact. Carolina has scored all 13 times that the Tar Heels have uh, crossed midcourt. Actually, all 10 times they've crossed midcourt. They're 10 for 13 in the ballgame. They've missed three shots, but they've rebounded all three shots and put them back in. Sam Perkins has done that twice, and uh, he's uh, playing a terrific ballgame. 77% for Carolina from the floor, 5 for 5, 100% from the line. And Wake Forest back to their miserable shooting, 3 of 11 for 27% in the second half. That's 77% for the half, Robert? It is. Best half this year was 78.6 against Dartmouth. We got a whistle and a timeout. Young has come up limping after there was contact made on a ball being knocked away. And Wake Forest has already lost one guard tonight, Delaney Rudd, who went out with a gippy knee with the 437 mark. Jordan was uh, defensing uh, Danny Young and uh, the contact they had as the ball was getting away was the reason for the injury that Young has suffered. You know, Henry, when the season started, Carl Tacey had talked about how he didn't want to let Danny Young suffer the, uh, the physical uh, burnout that he might have at the end of last year. He had used him so much, he wanted to give him some uh, relief, and I think he's been trying to do that. And, of course, the Wake Forest problems down here at 35 are already magnified with Rudd out. And if Young goes out, well, that just means they're that much greater. I mean, not only tonight, but, I mean, these players have left. Young appears to be walked pretty good, but they've left with the type of injuries that might uh, disable them for a game or two. That's right, and he can't afford to do that. What he's had to... He's had some uh, problems all year. And we, even with his big men, he's had problems. So Wake Forest has been haunted by mistake, uh, rather by injuries all year. Tichy free for the layup as the Deacons get the ball inbound. Nine points for the Goldsboro senior. 66-33. Kenny Smith getting by both. Tried to bounce it to Darty. Intercepted Kepley. Two on one break. Kepley will take it all the way in. Reverse layup is good by Dick Kepley. That's his 10th point. 66-35 with 11.25 to play. The crowd's really been out of this game since the Tar Heels built up such a commanding first-half lead. And not in it again at the moment. As Carolina comes down, still up by 31. Here's Perkins from Kenny Smith. Jump hook off the baseline is good. Perkins now with 12, 68-35. Bogues to Kepley, the Deacons at the other end. Bounces it back to Bogues on the right wing. Back to Kepley. Jump shot, right corner. Good! Dick, uh, Chuck Kepley, Dick Kepley's son, having one of the best nights of uh, his career. Matter of fact, this is the first game this year. He's been in double figure. Shot is good by Michael Jordan at the other end, and Jordan has got 21, 70 to 37. Boy, Dean Smith was right. He said the other night he thought Michael was out of his shooting problems and back to being the Michael of old. 10 of 14. I'd say that looks like the Michael we all know and love. Shot missed. Rebounded Brad Darty for Carolina. Off to Matt Darty. Kenny Smith. Sam Perkins. Layup no good. Kenny Green fouls. It'll be number four on the Eustis Florida sophomore. And we'll send uh, Sam Perkins to the line with a couple of shots upcoming. Kenny Smith running the break again for Carolina. Getting the ball down quickly and pushing the uh, the offensive flow for Carolina again tonight. Kenny Smith has done that very well. We haven't made mention of uh, some of the feeds he's been making on the break, Woody, but he's been throwing some nice passes and Kenny Smith looking real good and uh, much better, really, than he did the Duke game on Saturday night. Sam Perkins ready on the first one, and it's good. Sam's a perfect three of three at the line. He's got 13 points. Sam's in the top 10 of all the ACC statistical categories that big people should be in. 
Fourth in scoring, second in rebounding, fourth in field goal percentage, seventh in free throw percentage. Probably ranks about third and just doing the other things, not assist, but the other things. A good player do like blocking shots. He slapped that one clear into the backcourt. 72-37. He came into the game with 28. Boy, what a rejection that was. Now that suddenly got the crowd back into it. 72-37. Fine. to both. Drive. Foul line. Dishes to Green. Jump hook. Lane. Good. Kenny Green. 10 points. 72-39. Kenny Smith in the backcourt calling out the Tariel offense. Now gets it to Darty over on the left side. He comes to the hash mark. Now to Smith in the midcourt area. Wake Forest in the zone. 2-3 zone. Here's Matt Darty in the lane. Pushes up the shot. It's good. Matt Darty with eight. 74 to 39. Bogues for Wake Forest to Kepley. Bounce pass back to Bogues. Fake the shot. Gives it to Kepley. Kepley's the guy with the hot hand at the moment. He's having his best game offensively of the year. Klein to teach you at the baseline. Back to Klein. Now to Bogues. Hooks it over to Kepley. Kepley will come baseline. Forces up the shot. And it's no good, but he was fouled by Michael Jordan. That will be number three on Jordan. He becomes the first Tar Heel with 9.07 left to play to get three personal fouls. Michael had 15 in the first game between these two teams. He's got 21 here tonight. He's out. Steve Hale is in. Woody Carolina has outscored Wake Forest 33 to 16 in the second half. And uh, like we said, we don't want to talk too quickly here because you know what happened last Wednesday night is Kepley drops his first free throw through. But right now, Carolina in command of this ball game. Looks like they're going to go ahead and win it. And Wake Forest uh, continues their downward trend as Kepley makes his second one. And this has got to be frustrating for Carl Tacey. This would be his fourth loss if they don't uh, come back in this ball game. Folks from behind stripped it away from Kenny Smith and kicked the ball out of bounds. So it'll still be Carolina's ball. You know, Henry, the most amazing thing about that Virginia comeback last Thursday night, we'll get to that in a moment, as Carolina inbounds the ball. Hale over to Kenny Smith on the left side. Crossed the zone, it comes to Darty. Now to Perkins at the baseline. He almost lost control, recovered right corner. Kenny Smith, top of the circle, inside. Tried to bounce it to Darty, knocked away. Brad Darty trying to make the save, does to Matt Darty on a jump catch at the hash mark. Bounces inside to Perkins. Perkins started up with a jump hook, hit, no foul on the play. Kenny Green coming down. Perkins trying to catch up. Green driving in for the layup. Kenny Green for 12, 74 to 43. Eight and a half minutes left to play in the ball game. Kenny Smith against Bowes comes to Brad Darty. Pushes low to Perkins. Layup, no basket. Foul by Mark Klein. Klein gets his first. Perkins will go to the line. Joe Wolf replaces Brad Darty. You know, Henry, I was about to say, the most amazing thing about the Wake Forest of the Virginia comeback last Wednesday night was it happened so quickly. With under 11 minutes, they were trailing by 21 points. And with, uh, what, five minutes or more left to play in the ballgame, they were within one, the Cavaliers were. Well, Virginia's on that tough road swing. They, uh, you know, Terry Holland said he wanted to try to come out of that four-game road stretch, only losing one game. He's lost two now, and really, the, the game down on Saturday afternoon was a gift from Clemson. Clemson had him down, and... Uh, Gave him the ball twice under the basket. Sam Perkins makes his first free throw, but he's got another tough game coming up right here against this team in Greensboro on Saturday afternoon. So uh, I tell you, this, the play in the league this year is tough. Wake Forest, Virginia, there's another good uh, two teams who are not uh, winning that many games right now, but playing well. Perkins makes both his free throws. 16 points for the big guy, 76 to 43. Chuck Kepley inside the green. Couldn't hold it, lost it. Believe me, Wake Forest will play Virginia tough. I concur with what Dean Smith says. A team that's been embarrassed really plays well next time out. The Deacons are getting embarrassed here tonight in Chapel Hill. 8-10 to play. Here's Wolf at the foul line from Hale. Back to Matt Darty. Over to Steve Hale. Jump shot from out on the left. No good. Bounces high. Perkins tap follow. No good. Tap follow by Darty. No good. Klein away with a rebound to both. Bogues streaking across the timeline. We'll take it all the way in. No, feeds Teachy. Lost the ball. Matt Darty goes to the floor with Bogues. Loose. Darty comes up with it. Got it to Hale. <laughs> Hale protects the ball. Boy, give it to Matt Darty. He dove and beat Tyrone Bogues to the ball. That's quite a feat. First and 10. Darty <laughs> carries for the first down. 76-43. Perkins 17. Good. And Sam whips the air with his fist. 78 to 43, 725 to play in the ball game. 
Carolina by 35. Kenny Green to Klein. Klein on the left wing. Bounces to Kenny Green. Gives it back to Klein to Bogues. Carolina in the 1-3-1 zone. Klein fires over it and scores. Klein with his second field goal. 78-45. 7.05 to play. Dean Smith starting to look down the bench. He's calling Cecil Lexus to him. Smith now to Hale. Hale looking against Kepley. Goes to Matt Darty. Klein tightening up on him. Bounces it to Joe Wook. Comes now to Kenny Smith. Smith holds high to Matt Darty. Breaking free left of the circle. Matt looks inside, goes to Hale at the wing on the left side. Hale to Perkins, top of the circle. Now shuffles it away to Joe Wolf. Wolf looks for somebody cutting through, can't find anybody, has to drop it to Smith, back out front to Hale. Now to Darty toward the left corner. Darty gives it up to Perkins. Perkins holds it on his hip, now gives it to Hale. Hale moves down, the shot clock's down to eight. Here's Kenny Smith from the foul line. Cut! Ball front rim, rolled away to the back rim, and then came back in and found the net. 80-45, Bogues. Kepley, jump shot, right corner, no good. Green with a rebound, jump hook over Perkins is good. Kenny Green with 14 points, 80 to 47. 6-10 left to play in the ball game. Dave Popson and Cecil Lexham getting ready to come in for the Tar Heels. Hale against Kepley, cross the top of the circle to Wolf at the high post. Tichy put a hand on it, Wolf pulled it away from him. Drives, baseline, up off the glass, no good. Tichy with a rebound, outlet intended for Klein, intercepted Matt Darty. Darty across the timeline, off the dribble to Perkins, out of the right corner, Goal! Boy, it's Sam Perkins from downtown, would he do it all? 82-47. Bogues to Green. To Tichy, jump shot, 17 feet, no good. Perkins with a rebound <laughs> to Kenny Smith. Two on one break, look away to Hale, driving layup. Boy, Blake Barnes has got to have a timeout, Woody. This is embarrassing for Carl Tacey and his team, and Tacey says we're going to take one. And here it comes. It'll be Wake Forest second. Sign flash about a Tar Heel destination in early April and late March. We'll have to wait and see. That's a long way down. Smith into the Deacon bench. It'll still be on to Wake Forest. You know, it's hard to draw any comparisons between this game and the first game. Uh, Carolina, a lot of lead changes, a lot of ties in that ball game. Carolina really blowing them out. It's almost like saying, hey, we're not going to let what happened to us last Wednesday night against Virginia happen again. We're going to go ahead and take care of Wake Forest tonight. They're doing Travel. it. Travel against John Toms. He missed the shot, but the turnover will give it to Wake Forest. Dean Smith is talking to Timo Makinen on the bench in the crowd since this Timo's getting ready. Here he comes, Woody. 84-47, 4.45 left to play. Smith, jumper, 15, good! 86-47. Kenny Smith with 14. That matches his high in the opening game of the year against Missouri. He is 7 of 10 tonight. Toms over the Carolina zone. No good. Rebounded by Garber. He goes back. Block, whoop. Whistle fouls on Cliff Morris before the shot. Listen to the crowd. Here comes Timo. Steve Hayes places Kenny Smith. Timo Makinen is in for Cliff Morris. I, I believe this is the earliest he's gotten in the game this year, Woody, so I think the crowd senses that Timo might have a chance to score in this game, and if he does, boy, the walls will come crumbling down. Of course, Timo's uh, big game, the eight points in the north-south doubleheader last year against Furman. At the free throw line after the Morris foul is going to be Lee Garber. Free throw is good, 86 to 48. Garber's first point of the game. He's the junior from out of Kingsport, Tennessee. He didn't play at all in the first game between these two teams and came back just three nights later to score 16 points against Duke. Made good on the next one, 86 to 49. You will hear noises in the background. It will be every time Timo touches it. Woody, listen to this. Sam Perkins is 8 for 14 tonight, 22 points. Matt Darty, 3 for 5, 8 points. Brad, 6 for 10, 12 points. Michael Jordan, 10 for 14, 20 points. And Kenny Smith, 7 for 10, 14 points. Have you ever heard such, such shooting stats? That lights out. Pocket it to Exum. Exum on the drive. Baseline won't go through. Drops it back to David Popson. Popson goes to Timo. Turns, hooks. Oh, it won't go. Rebounded by Tom. Oh, 
this crowd was coming to its feet. Here's Bowles, foul line, jumper off the rim, no good. They battle for it inside. Tichy had it, lost it. They got a whistle, and the foul's on Steve Hale of Carolina. It'll be number three on Hale. That's going to be the sixth team foul against Carolina. They're showing the one and one. Jim Burks came to the bench and said one and one, Woody. I don't know if he was asking whether it was one and one or indicating that it would be one and one. Bogues is going to be at the line. They show one and one. We've apparently missed one somewhere because I have only six team fouls. It'll be Tichy at the line. He's one of one on the night. Good here, and it's 89, 86 to 50. Tichy now with 10 points. He came into this game with 44 block shots on the year. Needed needs just 12 more to be the all-time leader as the regulars are on the bench now for the Tar Heels. Cliff Barr is sitting next to the Tar Heel coaching staff, getting ready to come back if needed. Tichy's next free throw is good. He's got 11 for the game. Green was 14, and Tichy with 11 lead the scoring. Also, Kepley with 14 for Wake Forest. An official timeout. Stops the clock, 3.56 to play in the ball game. Timeout on the floor with the score, Carolina 80. Fisca Fish Camp Whitehorse Road in Greenville. Woody Durham and Henry Hinton back at Carmichael Auditorium where Carolina will have the ball out of bounds. Timo Makinen will trigger the inbounds play. He runs the baseline, finally gets it into Hale. Just under four minutes to go. 86-51. Ball taken away by Bogues in the backcourt. Bogues driving against Hale. Forces it up. It's no basket. Offensive foul on Bogues. Oh, boy. It's the second on the Dunbar High School graduate from out of Maryland. Boy, you can read it all over Carl Tacey's face. He's going, boy, can't we just get one little break? Just one? Bakkenen will again trigger the inbounds play to Joe Wolf. Now to Steve Hale. Comes back to Bakkenen. Bakkenen over to Hale. Hale down the left sideline. I told you there'd be noise when Timo holds it. Thompson now right of the lane. Thompson wants to go to the baseline. Gives it to Exum, top of the circle. Cecil will drive down the right. Thompson sets a nice screen for him, and Cecil didn't knock it in. Tap followed by Wolf is good. <laughs> Wolf gets his seventh point of the night. 88-51. Garber from out on the right for Wake Forest. Lee Garber with his first field goal. That's four points. 88 to 53. Wolf now to Exum. Exum looking inside, comes to Hale. Hale drops it to Joe Wolf. Wolf has the pass to Cecil Exum, and Exum stepped out of bounds, trying to get a little uh, support before going up. He'd got too far underneath, then he wanted to come back from underneath and lay it up and in, but he couldn't do it without stepping out of bounds. 88 to 53. Garber to Bogue. Now comes to Tom. Open, 20 feet. Rimmed out, would go. Mockinen with a rebound. Drops it to Steve Hale. Hale across the timeline with 2.50 to play. Down the right sideline, drives the baseline. Knocked away by Bogues, and it'll be Carolina's ball. Well, I tell you, you got to watch Tyrone Bogues. He is so fast, he'll pick your pocket. That nope. time, Steve Hale didn't even know the ball been knocked away from him. Well, think, he's coming in behind. You know, a lot of guys will swat at the ball, but the thing about Bogues is he can run right up next to the ball from behind. Exum on the right, right of the lane. Hands it to Timo. Timo bounces it back to Exum. Exum penetrating, lost it. Timo has it. Nice pass. Popson tried to duck it. Wouldn't go. Popson reverse layup is good. When I say reverse layup, he put it up and in from behind his head because he had his back turned to the basket. 90-53 with 2.25 to go. Klein bounces to Karasik. Back out front to Bowles for Wake Forest. Carolina in the 1-3-1 zone to Kenny Green at the high post. Green one dribble, knocked away. Green lost it. Hale recovers for Carolina. Lead pass is out to Joe Wolf. He drops it back to Popson. We get a whistle, and the foul is called on Chuck Kepley. Kepley breaking up the layup. Sam Perkins and the bench all laughing because I'll tell you what Wolf was going to do. Wolf already had that baby coming back on a reverse pass to the trailing David Popson. And had the two big freshmen done that. We'd heard a lot of sound. <laughs> it was a nice lead pass by Popson on that, Woody, and he uh, he led Joe Wolf just perfectly going down into the lane and uh, uh, almost a real nice uh, break for the Tar Heels. Wolf now with eight points. He'll match his season tie of, of uh, nine scored against Dartmouth if he connects here. It's 91 to 53 with 207 to go and. This one's no good off front rim. Tapped right back to him by Mockinen. Out in the midcourt area, ball loose. Exum had it. Kepley knocks it away off to Bogues. 
Bogues on the drive against Hale. Spins away. Drops it to Kepley. Reverse layup is no good. Wolf out with a rebound. Outlet pass to Exum. Exum coming down against Karasik. Will take it all the way for the layup. He flew right by Karasik and went down and laid it in. 93-53. Fine jumper from on the left is good for Wake Forest. Mark Fine has six. 93-55. Less than two minutes to go, and an offensive foul has been called on Joe Wolf off the ball. Mark Klein had set the pick, and Wolf ran over him for his first personal foul. Cliff Morris is coming back into the lineup. Joe Wolf is out. The regulars, Darty, Perkins, Smith, Jordan, and Matt Darty all high-five him along the sideline. Mark Klein will go to the line. He's a two-time West Virginia Player of the Year, two-time high school All-American. Free throw is good. Carson, it was a news conference appearance uh, on the telephone that Carl Tacey made with uh, Mark Klein the day he decided to come to Wake Forest that has the Deacons right now on a minor probation by the NCAA and will not keep them out of any tournament action or off TV or anything. 93-57. Exum tripped up by Bogues from behind. Tyrone again coming in from behind trying to pick Cecil's pocket. That's his third personal. Stops the clock with 128 to play. People are heading for the exits. Don't they want to see Timo score? 93-57. <laughs> Exum ready for the free throw. Dick Paparo hands him the ball. Cecil makes it, 94-57. Five points now for Exum. Carolina, only 13 free throw attempts in this ball game, but the Tar Heels have made 12 of them, make it now 13 of 14. 95-57, minute 25 to go. Klein goes to the baseline, goes to Karasik. Karasik bumps Morris, now will take the jump shot, no good. Bakken in with a rebound. There's the outlet to Exum. Exum ahead to Hale. Hale gives it right back to Exum. Layup good. Cecil Exum. Cecil with eight. That's a new career high for the senior from Dudley, North Carolina. 97-57. Now the crowd wants 100 points. Woody got a minute left. One minute right now. Henry, you're right. Klein over on the left side. Out front to Bogues. Back it comes to Klein. The jump shot over the zone. No good. Klein will run it down at the baseline on the left. Caught the double team. Bounces it. And we get a whistle and the foul called on Mockett. The bounce pass was a way to Craig Russell, the seven-foot freshman from Elkhorn, Wisconsin, who's coming to the ball game now. Mockett picking up his first personal foul. 97-57, 48 seconds to go in the ball game. But well, Timo hadn't had a chance to score yet, Woody. He's only made one shot that he's been in, but he's done a good job sweeping the boards down there. He's been a rake. Russell's free throw is good. Carolina will move to 6-0 in the ACC. 15-0 overall. Wake Forest drops to 1-4 in the league. 12-4 overall. Next free throw is also good by Wessel. 97-59. Thompson to Morris. Morris lead pass to Exum. Cecil doesn't scoop good. Oh Cecil draws the foul. It's 99 <laughs> to 59. Foul is on Karasik of Wake Forest. Exum will have a chance to give the Tar Heels 100. Well, I'll tell you what, Cecil Exum got down low. He had an opportunity to go up and make it. He did a double clutch. Watch me, Michael Jordan, move and stuck it in there, Woody. And boy, the regulars came off the bench. Nobody could be happier than the six guys are 100. Cecil knocks it in for his 10th point of the game, 11th point of the game, 159. The only thing that'll beat this in the minds of the Carolina fans, Cecil Morris coming down against Bogues. Reverse dribble, lost it, falls to the floor, passes Hale. Hale shots up, no good. Hale follows up again, and they bat it around off the glass. The Timo jump shot. Oh, it was an air ball. Morris tried to save it. The ball hit the baseline. <laughs> That's the only thing that would have kept the night if Timo would have hit the 10-foot jump. <laughs> if the walls would have come down. Before that exchange, the subs were 6 of 9. 67%. I don't know what that last exchange did through the shooting, but they were doing well before that. Klein to the baseline. Only 15 seconds remain. 100 to 59. Bogues feeds inside Klein. Up for the shot. It'll count. There's a foul on David Thompson. Klein gets the bucket. I think the Tario fans, as Klein now has 10, the Tario fans want a foul to stop the clock to give nine seconds to go back the other way to give Timo one more chance. Thompson's foul was his second. I'll tell you, nobody in the arena 
has enjoyed this more than the Tar Heel regulars. Missed free throw. Bala is up and good by Wessel. He's got four, 163. Morris, three, two, one, fires off the glass, just misses. Game is over. Casey and Smith shake hands in front of the scorer's table. Listen, the Tar Heels got on the Deacons early, and they broke it open early and never looked back and go on to win by 37. Son, we don't spend enough time together. I know. So I want to take you for your very Third and fourth. Now, if you'd like tickets, give this number a call. This is the ticket office here in Chapel Hill, 919-962-2296. And we'll give you that number again in just a moment. The North-South doubleheader tickets can also be picked up in person at the Coliseum for all you folks down in the Charlotte area. Don't miss this very last North-South doubleheader featuring the 1982 and the 1983 NCAA champion Tar Heels and the Wolfpack. Once again.